What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Today we are filming an historic Lincoln building in the 18th and Vine Jazz District right here in Kansas City, Missouri. Our special guest today is the Councilman of the 6th District, Mr. John Sharp. We'd like to welcome him back to What's Up Kansas City to talk to us today about specific topics. Let's start off on the bat with ambulance outsourcing. On June 19th, the City Council voted, I uh, believe, a vote 7 to 4 to outsource ambulance bill brought about some controversy. Uh, including an opposition group that is currently trying to gather over 7,000 signatures uh, to stop this outsourcing from happening. Now, Mr. Sharp, you were one of the council persons to speak up and voice your opinion. Why all this controversy? Well, I don't like uh, privatization generally because usually uh, these companies will come in and they'll tell uh, local units of government, oh, we can do it cheaper, we can do it better. They usually can do it cheaper. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, they pay people Walmart-type wages, they don't give them any benefits, they don't give them any pensions, so they can usually do it cheaper, but whether they can do it better or not is, is a real question. And uh, the ladies, and, and most of them are African-American that are doing the billing and collecting for the uh, ambulance service here in Kansas City, have been doing it a long time. They're really professionals on, at it. Uh, several of them worked for Mass before the transition of the ambulance service to the fire department. So uh, their collections are, are doing very well. And uh, unfortunately, this company was able to convince uh, a majority of, of my colleagues that, oh, we can save money doing this. And then, of course, they promise they'll collect millions more for the city. Mm -hmm. But uh, this same company has made those kind of wild promises in other cities, and they've fallen on their face. So, you said it's unfortunate. Let's talk pros and cons. Uh, part of the opponent's argument is that uh, uh, again, the uh, uh, Intermedex, I'm probably Intermedex. Intermedex, Intermedex, thank you, customer service uh, has uh, some issues and uh, city officials are pointing out, however, that the move only affects 16 city employees and you really can't complain because these people will be offered new jobs. Oh, the city now, after severe criticism, agreed to offer them other jobs for the city. But I, I've been around long enough to know how that works. Uh, they may well offer them jobs they know they don't want to take uh, or jobs in, in uh, other parts of the city. We, we don't have other jobs doing medical mm -hmm. billing, so they'd have to retrain them to do something else anyway. But that's, that's not really the issue, although that's part of it. I, I think we ought to try to maintain uh, good paying jobs here in Kansas City with good benefits and a living wage uh, and, and not replace most of those people uh, with, with people working out of state. So yeah. you're definitely against the outsourcing. Do you hope that the, um, not, let me ask you, if the signature, what happens if we do get the signatures? How, how do we move forward with that? Well, I, I'm confident they'll be able to get the signatures, although it's a tremendous number. They have to get over 7,000. But once they do, then the city council has to either repeal the ordinance, which we should have never passed in the first place, just passed it with, with the bare minimum number of votes, or put it on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And if we put it on the ballot, I'm, I'm sure people well, will turn it down. Well, voters decide. That's right, and, and I don't think they will want to outsource Kansas City jobs to a Fort Lauderdale, Florida company. Sticking to his opinion. And a company that has been involved in a massive patient identity theft. Mm -hmm. and, and when the city asked them about this, they, they really were not truthful and honest about the extent of it. They made it look like this was no big deal, but 32,000 patients uh, of 27 of their client agencies in 17 states, this was a nationwide thing, mm -hmm. had their identity stolen, and some of that information was used to file phony federal income tax refunds. Mm -hmm. So if you need an ambulance for yourself or a loved one, you, you've got plenty to worry about. You don't need to worry about having your identity stolen. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm confident if it goes to the ballot, the public will overwhelmingly defeat it. Eastern Patrol Division Crime Lab on Prospect and 27th Avenue. I should have that memorized by now, Councilman Sharp. <laughs> a public art commission was recently awarded to an Iowan artist who, uh, I guess, presented a colorful tiled gateway that will line the new complex department. Uh, the project was open to all artists in the United States. However, uh, 60 pe 61 artists submitted their uh, submissions, but only one Kansas City artist even attempted uh, 
Now, you went on record saying, on KCR, saying that one out of 61 submitting a proposal for a commission is a real concern. Can you? Well, it, it absolutely why? is. And, and for several years, we've had this 1% for art program. So, on major city building projects, 1% of the funds are used for public art. And often, those, that's quite a bit of money. And during that time, the, the great overwhelming bulk of, of those awards have gone to uh, artists from other cities. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them have gone to artists from the coast, from California, or New York, and, and that area. At least this time, we're getting a little closer to Missouri. This, this guy's from Iowa. But I'd, I'd like to see more okay. of those go to Kansas City artists. And if we are serious about developing a strong, vibrant arts community, here in Kansas City, we have to spend more of this money with local artists. Now, some of them really don't have a lot of expertise in developing outdoor art, art that, that's going to have to be durable and, and still look good in 10, 20 years. And we've, we've set up a new office in, in the city, an Office of Cultural Affairs, and that's one of the things that I think it's very important for them to do is to work with our local artists so the next time we go out for proposals for public art. We won't just have one person submit, that we'll have numerous local artists submit. But I also think the, the, the selection group uh, has got to look a little more favorably on, on our own artists. I, you know, here in Kansas City, uh, we don't have real high self-esteem. And, and I think a, a lot of folks think, well, if, if you're from Kansas City, you, you probably aren't on par with, you know, ladies and gentlemen from the coast. You know, if you're from New York, oh, you've got to be a little better. You're from L.A., you've got to be a little better. Well, baloney. We, we've got plenty of good artists here, and we ought to give them a chance. For next time, we uh, have those provisions made. Well, Councilman Sharp, I'd like to ask you, just because I want to be fair to your fellow city councilmen, are you the only one speaking up about this? No, uh, uh, several other council members, uh, Councilwoman Melba Curls, Councilman Ed Ford, uh, we're all on the same committee, and we all... Uh, share those concerns uh, uh, with our staff about that. And, and our staff does recognize, I think, that we have to do more to work with local artists to prepare them so they can be competitive mm -hmm. on these major public art uh, uh, proposals when they come forward in the future. So I'm, I'm hoping that the message is getting across. But a lot of people are saying, oh, we've got to have the best art. We, we can't give preference to local artists. Okay, but, but let's at least make sure we're preparing our local artists so they're on a level playing field with these folks that have, that have had a little more experience in it and, and uh, uh, are, are just a little more seasoned. We've, we've got artists here in Kansas City that are just as good as any artist in L.A. or any artist in New York. And I do uh, believe that um, if you talk about season and being experienced, we do have artists. We have people who actually grew up in Kansas City who go to school and move away. Uh, and to that end, just today on uh, my Facebook feed, we have I'm So KC. And you see people you went to school with, college with, mm -hmm. people you worked in professional capacities nationally, uh, reminiscing fondly on their Kansas City art experiences. Yeah. So to that end, uh, opening up a channel of communication for the next art project to be a local resident will give uh, community members an outlet to express their pride. So I I'm glad you were able to, uh, to, to talk to us about that. Now, we want to uh, mention Cerner Corporation. Last time you were here, you were real amped up about the preparations. Cerner Corporation building on Bannister Mall site. We drive past it. It looks like something's still going on. Can you tell us what 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 what's occurring? What's what's happening? Well, I'm more amped up today because they have actually expanded the project. Instead of yes. uh, a project that's going to generate about fifteen thousand jobs over the next ten years, now it'll be sixteen thousand jobs. Sixteen thousand jobs. And, 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 and these are good paying jobs too. These aren't minimum wage jobs. These are jobs that'll pay about seventy seventy five thousand a year, and they've expanded it to include those two rundown motels that are on the south side of 87th Street. And th that address where those two motels are generates more calls for service from the South Patrol Division of the Police Department than any other address in South Patrol. A lot of them are, are drug or prostitution related, and they're, they're really a blight on, right that whole, right, uh, on that whole 87th Street corridor. So we're so glad 
to see that they'll be demolished and Cerner is going to put in a training and conference center there which will bring their associates to South Kansas City, to the Hickman Mills School District from all over the city, uh, all over the county, I'm sorry, to uh, be trained and, and uh, uh, to have conferences and of course when they're here they'll go out to eat, uh, they're going to build a, a nice hotel on, on site, a boutique hotel, so they'll be staying in that and that'll help uh, the mom and pop businesses there along 87th, along Bannister, along Blue Ridge reopen because they'll have more customers and, and we'll have places to go out to eat, we'll have places to shop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that will definitely add to the economic development capacities to attract more people to Kansas City. I'm just hearing you talk about it. Now the second annual Missouri Classic is taking place on, let me look at my notes, I want to get the right date, September 6th. Last year we had the Gramlin Tigers, is it? Yes. Take on the Lincoln Tigers. This year we will have the Lincoln Tigers take on the Langston, Langston Lions. Lions. Lions, Tigers, and Bears. Oh my. <laughs> now, now Bears is Morgan State. We haven't quite gotten that far on the East Coast. But this is also another uh, example of pumping money into our economy. Tell us a little bit about uh, your thoughts on uh, this year's Missouri Classic. Well, well I, I'm real pleased to have the second classic and, and of course we hope that this will be an annual event just like the uh, uh, State Fair Classic in Dallas and a lot of the other classic games between uh, historically black colleges and universities and this is a, a great thing for Lincoln University too. I, I attended Lincoln some when I was working on my masters and of course Lincoln at one time was a real football powerhouse and it kind of the football program went downhill a little and they're in a very competitive conference and and you've got some real uh, division two powerhouses around this area Northwest Missouri State they've been national champ mm -hmm. Washburn and Topeka a very strong program uh, Central Missouri State's a good program but getting to play in Arrowhead on a nationally televised game in an NFL stadium, that will help Lincoln recruit uh, better athletes. So it'll be great for that program. Uh, we're glad to see Langston coming up. That, that, That's a classic. Uh, so uh, it should be a lot of fun. Of course, they have great halftime entertainment, great band shows. I was there last year when they played Grambling, and I, we think this game will just get bigger and, and bigger as we go along. They. Uh, uh, at the State Fair Classic in Dallas last year, it was raining all day, and, and they still had the, the old Cotton Bowl uh, with 30,000, 40,000 people in the rain. And uh, a lot of these games, as you know, sell out. The Bayou Classic in New Orleans, they sell out. So uh, we had uh, over 20,000 people at Arrowhead for the first one last year. We think we'll have e even more this year. Uh, tickets are very reasonable. They start at a little under $30. Uh, you can get them from Ticketmaster or there's several places here in town that will have them like Danny's Big Easy just right down the street. Uh, the Lutfi's uh, Fried Fish restaurants have them. M&M &M Bakery uh, there at 31st and Woodland. Mm -hmm. The Peachtree restaurant. So there are many places here in town you can get them or through Ticketmaster. Yes, yes. And I believe we, uh, the clothing store uh, where uh, Walmart used to sit I believe that's where we got our tickets last year. So what's up, Kansas City? Want to go get your tickets? Uh, the halftime show, I'm sure, will be just as entertaining, if not have uh, extra surprises in there. And hopefully this year we'll get a good football team because Grambling last year, they, they didn't want to play. They didn't show up to play. Well, Lincoln uh, really just whipped them. And, and before the game, uh, Everybody thought that Lincoln would have trouble hanging with Grambling. Yeah, yeah. So it Watch was a for, for those of us who who attended Lincoln, that was a great outcome. It is. It was really a, a good, exciting game, and I think everybody had a great time. Yes, yes. So what's up, Kansas City? Please come out, bring your paraphernalia, wear your school colors, and represent your alumni group. And even if you're not in a particular HBCU college alum, we want to invite you to come out anyway. It's an honor, honor having you here, Mr. Sharp. Uh, would you like to talk to about anything else before we wrap? Well, just uh, I, I did want to give credit to my colleague, uh, Councilman Jermaine Reed, who has worked on this uh, an awfully lot to make sure this classic was successful. Uh, the promoters from Dallas, he's got a good track record uh, down there on promoting uh, the State Fair Classic. So th this is a first class event all, all the way. They'll have a lot of other activities uh, uh, during the week leading up to it. And, and of course, a lot of our uh, 
students here in Kansas City, uh, especially African American students, go to historically black colleges and universities. And, and uh, it's a great way to promote not only Lincoln, which is our, our historically black college here in Missouri, but just the, the uh, historically black colleges generally, because uh, there are many kids from here that go to them. My son is biracial, went to Clark Atlanta, uh, where he played baseball and uh, got a great education, uh, had a lot of fun playing ball and graduated and college has paid off, so it's all good. I won't tell you that my uncle went to Gramlin. <laughs> but uh, no, my, my mom did go to Lincoln and I have several church members who yeah. are members of Langston. So we can turn out in force, what's up Kansas City, Arrowhead on September the 6th to support the game, Missouri Classic, second annual. Mr. Sharp, it's been an honor having you here Thank today. You, we hope that you'll come back a third time. Third time is always a charm to, to talk to us a little bit, follow up on what we talked about today. I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell. Check out more video online at www.whatsupkansascity.net. And remember, the sky is the limit. Aim for the moon. If you miss, at the very least, you would have landed among the stars. Take care. Join us next time. CMG wants you to always remember the victory we call success goes to the best prepared. When you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. Thanks. Thanks.